Welcome back to Echo Ridge and another episode, well, okay, so this is going to be the final episode of the farm series. Now, wait, 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 before you start yelling at me in the comments, there's a pretty good reason for it. As many of you know, the new Frosty Planet pack is out and I had planned on doing a small couple of videos just to go over some of the changes. Well, when I was doing my homework this morning, don't act like you haven't waited to the last minute to do homework either. I was out of town for a couple days. I realized, well, there's a lot more to this planet pack than I had originally suspected. In fact, if you go to Clay's update forums, you can read all about it. And I knew about the new starting world and the new critters, the new plants, new biomes, new elements, even a new duplicate. What I did not necessarily realize was the revised temperature mechanics. And this sort of gets me excited. Because before, you could throw duplicants into the coldest of cold biomes, and it wasn't that big of a deal. Yeah, if they got wet, they may end up with some hypothermia, but it wasn't exactly a game changer. But when you start adding up all the new biomes, all the new buildings, and the foods that go with it, not to mention all the new points of interest buildings, this kind of gets me in the mood to want to start a new series. But what solidified this was all of the new temperature mechanics. This really sort of changes the way we're going to be playing the game, especially some of the early game mechanics, to include the new frostbite damage whenever the duplicates are in temperatures below minus 90, and even the duplicate comfort range changing between 0 and 45. Now, Temporarily, I guess, hypothermia and hypothermia diseases have been removed. Instead, duplicates are now vulnerable to chilly surroundings and toasty surroundings debuffs, which sort of makes sense based on all the temperature changes. I would have liked to seen hypothermia and hypothermia stay. And in a change that the community is sure going to love, curried beans now provide one cycle of frost resistance, thanks to the spicy diet effect. And another reason why I don't just sort of play two at once is it seems like the farm series is having more and more issues. These duplicates have been stuck inside of our wonderful greenhouse for quite some time, despite the fact that the transit tube access has plenty of charge. For instance, right now, two or three dupes could be leaving. Yet, they all seem to want to chill out in here, grabbing some meal lice and some other foods. Not a big deal, except... Well, the lag is probably going to end up causing them more grief than what it should be. I have been doing some of the cullings of the fishes, but it's going to be a little while before the duplicates get to all of them. But it's not a big deal anyways, because the only thing better than watching a video of an Echo Ridge gaming colony is watching a video on Echo Ridge gaming about a new colony. Look, work with me here, will you? But I also figured I would send this colony off in a blast by deconstructing all of our meteor protection to include our wonderful little troughs down here. That way, when the meteors do come, well, they can head off into the colony where they really want to cause some mayhem and chaos. And I mean, I guess if we're going to do it, we might as well do it right. Let me get rid of these little guys here and all of this. Oh, very nice. And then we'll deconstruct this area too. And that way the meteors have a better chance of coming down in here and you know, causing some issues. And now I'll just sit back and relax and wait for a meteor shower. Now, don't get me wrong, I did enjoy the concept of the farm series, but I think if I had to do it over again, I would limit myself to not necessarily full ranches of all the critters, but maybe two or three of each critter instead. And this would sort of save us with some of the problems of having 32 duplicates and hundreds of critters on the colony. Also, it was probably a mistake to start on a classic asteroid due to the fact there's a lot more gases and liquids and materials all interacting that the simulation has to calculate. By the way, someone in the comments had asked, what happens to sweepies when they fall and they're not able to get back to their sweepy dock? Well, sadly enough, they sort of spontaneously combust and a new one is created inside the sweepy dock. Although, if it helps you think about it, I'm sure it's the same Sweepy. They just sort of picked up all the pieces and put them back together inside the dock. Yeah, that's what we'll go with. With that being said, though, I've stared at these Sweepies for a couple of cycles and they still haven't combusted. I know I've seen them do it before, and I know it'll happen if you deconstruct the Sweepy dock. 
but it seems like these little fellas are just going to sit here for quite some time. I'm not sure if it's a recent change or what else is going on. But hey, at least it's a positive note, huh? Just like the positive note that we have a meteor shower getting ready to come. I sure hope it's a big one. And here comes the pain, and it looks like it's a slime meteor shower, which definitely doesn't hit as hard as, say, one of the metal meteor showers like the copper. But hey, I suppose something's better than nothing, right? In fact, why don't we also just go ahead and open this area up too? I've been promising to do this since the beginning of this series, so it would be sad if I didn't. There is 588 kilos worth of carbon dioxide in every single tile. I'm really looking forward to seeing how much this carbon dioxide will spread. And don't worry, our duplicates are going to be nice and safe inside their homes. Oh yes, here comes the pain. Patrick, don't get stuck. You really don't want to be stuck in there. Yes. Be free, carbon dioxide. Be free. It really isn't the chaos that I was hoping for. And part of the reason is because, once again, this colony is so big. So let's say there's 20 tiles of 588 kilos. Well, that means it's only one kilo per tile for about 10,000 tiles. Which is only an area about this big. Womp womp. So once again, I know some of you are going to be disappointed that the farm series ended sort of abruptly. But I'm really looking forward to starting a new series with the Frosty Planet Pack DLC. And that video should be coming out just an hour or two after this one posts. So hey, at least we have something to look forward to, right? Looking forward to seeing all the yays in the comments about starting a new series. Or if you're more in a grumbly mood, I'll be reading those comments too. So until next time, much love, happy gaming, and I'll talk to you soon.